Um, thank you very much. Can we um, shut it down now? All right, uh, thank you very much to each and all of you for raising this occasion and honoring our invitation. My name is Maria Matanso, the Programs and Communications Officer for the Center for Policy, Research, and Strategic Studies, CEPRAS, and I would be moderating um, this event. So quickly, before we start, we kindly ask all of us to observe um, a minute or a few seconds prayers to seek for divine intervention and also prayers so that we can carry out this assignment as expected. Amen. May all our prayers be answered. So I would uh, call on the guests and also the people that should be occupying the high table so we can start proper. So first, I will call uh, Mr. Esandai, who is a political science lecturer at the University of the Gambia. And Esandai also worked for Center for Research and Policy Development as a consultant, and he is one of our guest speakers for today's event. So Mr. Esandai, you're welcome. Um, thank you. Next, after that, I'll call on my own special brother, Mr. Mohamed Esba, the president of the Gambia Press Union. Um, he's also um, a senior editor for Forea, and MS is one person that also plays a very vital role when it comes to civic engagement and education as far as uh, Gambia is concerned, and we are really happy that you are able to honor our invitation. Uh, I now have the honor to invite the team that worked uh, tirelessly to ensure that um, we're here today to disseminate the findings that um, they have come together as a team to analyze. I'll start with uh, Dr. Hamidou Jawara, who is also um, a senior consultant and also part of the team that worked on this um, assignment. Right after that, I'll call on um, Dr. Jobate, who's also um, part of the team that worked on this assignment. Uh, Dr. Jabati, you're welcome. And now I have the honor to invite um, our executive director, Mr. Lamin Dampa, who's the executive director for CEPRAS and was also part of the lead uh, team for this assignment to also assume his seat so we can proceed with the official opening ceremony. Thank you very much, gentlemen. So, ladies and gentlemen, that does it for um, people that will be occupying the high table for now. So, I have the honor to invite Mr. Lamin Dangfa, the Executive Director of CEPRAS, to give the welcoming remarks and also project background of uh, this assignment so people can get a better understanding of why we're here this morning. Thank you very much, Mariama. Um, well, I have to um, recognize the presence of our invited guest. Um, of course, I also want to recognize the presence of um, Dr. Sawane, who is representing the board chair and also the dean of the School of Business and Public Admin for this very important occasion. Um, dear colleagues from the civil society organization, my fellow research partners, 
and all other protocols duly and respectfully observed. It is my great pleasure to be here today and welcome you to this um, dissemination workshop for the release of our final mailing opinion polls. Before I continue to the discussion of the result, um, I mean, allow me to make a few remarks here. First of all, let me express my sincere gratitude on behalf of the Center for Policy, Research and Strategic Studies, CEPRAS, the team that worked on this opinion poll. Um, I want to use this opportunity to thank um, first of all let me express my sincere gratitude on behalf of the Center for Policy Research and Strategic Studies um, the team that work on this pool and in particular our funders that is the National Endowment for Democracy based in the US for the support. NED, as they are fondly called, continues to support different groups in the Gambia in the area of democracy and governance. We greatly appreciate the trust and partnership that we have developed not only with NED, but also with other partners. Let me also take this opportunity to thank most profoundly the faculty, staff of School of Business and Public Administration for their foresight in setting up Cyprus. When opinion polls are conducted, few questions come to mind. Who conduct the opinion poll? And how did they do it? Or did they conduct it, if you like? Now, to give you some background of Cyprus, which I will not bore you with a lot of things, just to, uh, for those of you who don't, because remember, when we first released our pre-election poll, a lot of people were asked who are this group of people. Well, the Center for Policy Research and Strategy Studies, CEPRAS, was launched in 2016 by a team of faculty staff members at the University of the Gambia um, in order to complement the efforts of the university at the time in delivering quality research and consultancy services. CEPRAS is independently owned, managed, and run by a constituted group from its membership. However, we maintain close collaboration with the University of the Gambia. CEPRAS uses cutting edge research methods that combine both qualitative and quantitative approaches to address critical socioeconomic, migration, developmental, political, governance related issues and also to strengthen competitiveness in obtaining research funding in the designated areas. The center operates as non-for-profit making organization with a strong conviction that research is an important pillar in informed policy and decision making. The center focuses on research and consultancy services related to the following thematic areas. One, innovation and development, politics and governance, economic growth and inequality, migration, education and health, organizational building and management systems for development. The center is well positioned with the requisite expertise and facilities to handle surveys, training and research works. Our consulting team for any given assignment is selected based on academic proficiency relevant experience and proven track record to be able to competently and efficiently execute all the tasks demanded by our clients. Our competitive edge lies in our broad and in-depth understanding 
of national and international issues. In addition, the long-standing experience of our consultant in consulting, exceptional quality delivery, timeliness, and cost effectiveness make us a natural choice for any partnership. For the methodology of our, this opinion poll, our presenter, Dr. Jobati, will dwell more on, will dilate more on that. So in terms of the background, as far as this opinion poll is concerned, you know, having understand that the new political dimension uh, dispensation that emerged in 2017 has led to the promotion of democratic values such as freedom of speech, promotion of human rights, independence of the judiciary and political pluralism. The letter contributed to the emergence of many political parties with competing ideas on the governance of the state. Never in the history of the Gambia has there been such several political parties. As a result, the upcoming parliamentary election will arguably be one of the most heavily contested elections in the history of the Gambia. For the contest for the National Assembly to be based on pertinent issues on the governance of the country, it must be guided by a good understanding of public opinion on issues of national interest. In consideration of the foregoing, the Center for Policy Research and Strategic Studies suppress through the opinion polls and CSO capacity building project that is funded by NET, um, commissioned the first series of political opinion polls researches in the Gambia to track public perception on issues of national interest. Opinion poll surveys are very popular in modern democracies. Until the separatist first and second opinion polls published on 1st October and 26th and November last year, respectively, there has been no opinion poll conducted that is focused on informing the public on pertinent issues concerning an, an election. Hence, this will be the third edition of the separatist opinion poll focused on the performance of the borough government since the election and the parliamentary election aimed at bringing to light all the key governance issues in the run-up to the 9th April polls for the purpose of informing the populist political parties, other state and non-state actors. Moreover, to strengthen the hard-earned democracy in the Gambia, it is imperative that issues are crafted with an understanding of what most citizens want. Knowledge of public opinion on national matters will help promote democracy in ensuring that citizens hold the leaders accountable for their actions by bringing to light their discontentment and grievances. In the Gambia, politicians used to measure public opinion by gauging applause, counting crowds, or through individual contact with citizens. However, with this opinion poll survey, it can be used to construct a picture of public opinion on issues over time at different interval, which produces a bandwagon effect. Essentially, conducting these three opinion polls will make it possible to assess changes in citizen political orientation and to what extent these due to changes in the campaign strategies informed by results of an earlier opinion poll. Today's event really marks another milestone in our growing democracy. We stand ready <laughs> So continuing our collaboration with relevant stakeholders in tackling the difficult challenges, but also seizing the great opportunities that lie ahead. I look forward to today's dissemination and invite you all, and invite you all to participate actively and pose your questions and to share your ideas. I thank you all. Thank you very much, Executive Director of CEPRAS. Um, you've spoken well, and then I think a lot were nodding while you were speaking. It could only mean um, you, the purpose has been served. Um, one key, key takeaway from what he said is um, pop opinion polls are popular in modern democracies, and Gambia as a country cannot also be left behind. And then we've started this legacy, and we hope to ensure that um, we keep on uh, assessing and also driving to ensure that we uh, get as much knowledge as possible from the people as far as their opinions are concerned on issues that will be of interest uh, to this assignment. So moving on, I'll um, call on uh, the next speaker. Uh, we all understand that the media is also a stakeholder that plays very 
fundamental and um, important role in what could hold um, government or elected officials to account. And there is no uh, doubt that um, their responsibilities is also very much key. And as such, I would like to invite Mohamed Esba, uh, who is the president of the Gambia Press Union, to talk on the topic, uh, the role of media in opinion poll dissemination. Uh, Mr. President, if you're ready, this whole house is ready to hear from you. Um, thank you very much, Madam Chair, Mariama, my sister. You always ambush me, you know. Um, um, I wish to recognize the high table, Mr. Dampa, and the two doctors, um, Dr. Sawane and the other doctor. Um, sorry that I could not. Is it Dr. Dr. Jawara and Dr. Jabate, yeah? All right. And um, my own brother, Mr. Esa, and colleague. And I also wish to say good morning to comrades. Um, good to see you here. Um, my task is very simple. That um, is to um, dilate or discuss on the importance or the role of the media in disseminating opinion poll. I think Mr. Dampa has made mention of the importance of opinion poll in a democracy. Um, first, we have to understand the role of the media, um, our constitutional role. If you look at section 207, 208, 209, it is clearly stipulated in the 1997 constitution that the role of the media is to hold government accountable to the people. And media plays a very important role in, in democracy, in any democracy, democratic setup. Um, um, media plays a very significant role in ensuring that citizens are well informed in um, creating those divergent and dissenting opinions so that citizens can make informed decisions. And we also have to understand that the media set the agenda um, and create public discourse, intellectual public discourse, where people can tap into those opportunities and information, gather relevant information to ensure that they make the right choices they deserve. Um, opinion poll, very key, because we've seen over the years, it was so difficult for the media to operate because we don't have credible intellectual information from credible sources such as SEPRAS. And now we have SEPRAS, we have other institutions like Center for Research and Policy Development. I think these institutions are availing the media with the opportunity to get credible information, the right information from the public and making sure that this information are disseminated to the public on timely manner. Because I can remember during the presidential election, we made a very important opinion poll, uh, which was a public discourse, which triggered public discourse. And this time also, before the parliamentary election, we came up with another very important opinion poll. I was browsing through some of your key findings, which were very important. I think it is important for media to embrace such information, process it well, and ensure that you don't just give it a one-off publication. Because sometimes what happens in the media, we just see headlines like Sepras has published another opinion poll. We just give it a straight news. It ends there. Whilst all the relevant information are buried in the news or uh, they are not serialized. So I think it is important to look at the critical information. For instance, the performance of the parliamentary. For instance, corruption. What is the perception of people on corruption? You know, that's a topic of its own. You can even seek for public opinion and even dilate or, uh, you know, um, 
you know, extend your report on, on, on the opinion poll about corruption. You can even invite experts to analyze these issues and even gauge the opinion of people on the opinion poll itself. I think it is important that we don't just give it a straight news report, but by extension, give it a deep analytical um, you know, um, broadcasting or reporting, um, giving the, the wider picture, not only reporting as if it is just a straight news. I think the media plays a very important role in ensuring that this um, report is dis disseminated to the latter. For people to understand, <coughs> for the public to understand what is happening. Um, I will not take uh, much of your time because I believe we are all eager to see what, what is in the report, even myself, obviously. Mm -hmm. But I believe if, like, not everyone can be here. Not everyone is fortunate to be here. All of you are representatives of various media houses, and each and every one of you has an audience base. So try to make sure that you use your various platforms to ensure that the whole country get this important um, information from Sapras. And if we fail to do so, because we are um, going ahead, we, we are looking forward to a very progressive National Assembly. I think this National Assembly, the sixth legislative National Assembly, is going to be a test for the government. It's either we help the people, the citizens, to understand its importance and come out and vote decisively, or the media just report on happenings or events without giving the citizens the relevant information so that they make informed decisions, so that we have a very progressive National Assembly, a very balanced and progressive National Assembly. Uh, sometimes they said if, a, if uh, we have the media and the society fail to have informed decision or make informed decisions, then the media has failed. Because people believe that the media should set the agenda. The media should ensure that people are well informed um, in how they make their decisions. So on that note, I will urge you once again reiterate my call for you to not only give it a straight news angle, but ensure that there is a public discourse around it. You know, invite or create bigger platforms for divergent and dissenting opinion on this poll, because I think this poll is very important. I've seen the the perception on constitution and the constitution. I've seen the perception on the performance of the National Assembly, the, 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 the fifth legislative. So this will help to shape um, you know, people understanding on how to decide whether they will choose, some of them are even contesting, whether they will choose those people again or whether they will have people who understand the role of the National Assembly and have the country at heart not on partisan line or personal interest basis. So on that note, I will thank you all for your kind attention. Thank you. Thank you very much, um, MS, for those very brief but um, resounding words. Um, MS made something, uh, a statement that is very much important, which is um, every research is a publication. Every research publication is a gateway for another. And at Cepras, um, we've done our assignment. And part of it is to ensure that we um, put the button back or give it to the next set of people that should steer it. We are calling the media here to disseminate this information that we've had. And we hope and expect that um, the information would be disseminated as expected. And then the series of media engagements we also have is also includes the trainings that we do to ensure that we build the capacity of um, the journalists that would be disseminating the information to also ensure they don't deviate from the whole purpose to ensure that um, it is disseminated as expected. And I think even within the house, we have individuals that are beneficiaries of those trainings. The soul of that is to ensure that we don't have people, uh, like just MS said, one of reports where we just focus on the headline 
and forgot about the most important or detailed version of um, this report, and we hope uh, we will see the difference when it comes to this set of individuals that are in the house. Now, moving on further to um, the program, I'll call on uh, Mr. S. Anjai, who is a political science lecturer, University of the Gambia, to talk on the importance of opinion polls in policy making and democratization process of the Gambia. Mr. S. Anjai. Thank you very much, Mariama. And thank you very much, Cepras, for this opportunity. Um, I will just pick it up from where um, Dr. Jabate stopped, or oh, a point that he mentioned during his deliberation, um, to say that the liberalization of the political space in the Gambia is responsible for a lot of developments we have witnessed when it comes to democratization in the country. 2016, a dictatorship ended in the Gambia. And every Gambian enjoyed that moment because we felt that we now had the opportunity to have a say in our country's affairs. And having a say in our country's affairs is not only limited to going to the polls to cast our ballots, but it's also about having the right to freedom of expression, having the right to partake in public engagements, also having the right to voice our opinions on issues that matter most, especially when it comes to the welfare and well-being of Gambians. I think this was a giant stride registered in the Gambia. And I always, always say this victory belongs to the Gambian people. It did not belong or does not belong to any particular individual. It belongs to the Gambian people because Gambian people um, worked for it. So here is the fruit, or here is one benefit of the decision that we made in 2016 by putting an end to tyranny and choose the path to democracy. Opinion polls, like Mariama said, are very important in democratization process. They are very popular as well in democracies all over the world. Even in the so-called new democracies, because when we say democracies, um, scholars of democratization tend to bring distinction between mature democracies and democracies that are just growing, otherwise called new democracies, or fragile democracies, they call them. In the context of the Gambia, we agree that it is a fragile democracy because we are just starting. It is just five, six, seven years now, and it seems like everybody is ranting everywhere. Now we are also saying that democracy has been abused by a lot of people because it is a new one, it is a fragile one. Even the opinion polls that is conducted by SEPAS comes with its criticisms. And in the presentation, we will look at how opinion polls are also marked with criticisms because it does not favor one party to the other. Now, just on the topic, the importance of public um, opinion polls in policy making and democratization process. Opinion poll in a democracy are public opinions because it is the public that is involved or engaged in making this opinion. And when we say opinion polls, we are not only referring to predicting the outcome of elections, but like Cepras did, it is also about gauging the opinions or the views of people regarding a particular topic or series of topics that concern the welfare and well-being of the citizens. Gallup, which is an American um, company that engaged in opinion polls or conducting opinion polls, not only domestic-wise, but also globally, sees opinion polls as a scientific, non-biased survey or inquiry designed to measure the public's view regarding a particular topic or series of topics. And interviews mostly are used to conduct opinion polls with everyone in the population being studied, that is the population that is being studied, 
Everyone there has an equal chance of participation. However, not everybody can participate in this. But that is why they mostly choose method of random sampling. So that the data is not biased, so that it is also representative, and so that it can also be used to make generalization, which is very difficult in research. Now, what is the purpose of opinion polls? Before we go to there, we will say that opinion polls come with these controversies. Remember when they published their opinion polls shortly before the presidential election? It was all over the media, especially across the political divide. People that felt that opinion poll was not in their favor started castigating. And like um, Jobata said, they were questioning who is this organized, who are these people? What is their knowledge in research? Because it does not favor them. And that is normal. Like Obama, former President Obama of the United States says, democracy can be noisy, messy, and also complicated. And I'm sure whenever they are doing these opinion polls, especially when they are revealing them, because they normally reveal them at very critical times, shortly before elections, they are always aware of the consequences, which is normal. It is to predict an electoral outcome, and even candidature. I give an example when Barack Obama was inaugurated for a second term in the United States in 2012. Potential candidates were being ranked by a number of newspapers through polls to predict who will be the presidential candidates for the Democrats in the 2016 presidential elections in the US. Hillary Clinton topped that prediction as a front runner which was just so accurate. To gauge, it is also, the purpose is also to gauge the views of people on issues, of, on issues ahead of election. And this is what we call in political behavior, we call it issue voting. In most advanced democracies, or so-called advanced democracies, issue voting is very important. People vote based on issues that are affecting them. Today, if you come to the Gambia, everybody is crying corruption, corruption everywhere. In a mature democracy, people will have voted based on corruption to say, well, looking at this government since it came to power, we have had a lot of challenges when it comes to corruption. And there's no much effort being made from legal and policy frameworks to ensure that corruption is eradicated or minimized. And people can use that to vote. Like America, it is always done. Um, 2008, when they were voting, Obama was voted because Americans seemed tired of the war in Iraq and Afghanistan. And that, marks, um, that was a top issue in American election in 2008. But also, it is to know what the people think of a government. Opinion polls also serve the purpose of what people think of a government. And this will be revealed in their findings, I am sure. Know what people feel is about a particular issue in governance in the country. For example, on the 15th of February, 2003, the UK's biggest ever public demonstration in opposition to the looming invasion of Iraq was held. This became worldwide in many countries. While these mass public displays did not change Britain's policy, they have changed the decision of the Canadian government to keep their troops out of the Iraq conflict because of public opinion. What is the accuracy of public opinion or opinion polls? They come with accuracy, but could also be inaccurate in terms of predictions and even with figures. But in France in 2017, two rounds of opinion polls were held prior to the election, with Emmanuel Macron's prediction at 24% and 21% to Marie Le Pen. Then the second round in 2017 revealed an increase in Macron's percentage to 66.1% compared to Marie Le Pen's 33.9%. In 2022, first round, 25% to Macron, 17% to Le Pen. And this, we saw an increase of 57% to Macron with 43% to Le Pen. Now, what is important? It helped people to be heard. Like I said, democracy, when we say democracy, is not only going to the polls to vote. How do you hear people? Different means. And when we say democracy, we think of two questions. Who are the people and how should they vote? The people here constitute those that are eligible to participate in election. But elections are not the only means by which people can be heard. Also, through the media, 
also through public opinion, also through public engagements, conversations in platforms. It's a way of hearing the voice of the people. It is also a form of encouraging popular participation. Opinion polls help to foster popular participation in governance and democracy. Also, it guides the actions of government, but more importantly, it can influence public opinion, well, sorry, public policy, like I said, in the case of um, Canada. But also, opinion polls provides feedback to government. It is an opportunity for the government to know where its strength lies, but also where its weakness lies. But this is always possible in a society where the government is a bit tolerant and the government is willing to listen, but is also responsive and responsible to the people. It provides an opportunity for the rule by the people in a democracy. Like everyone knows, Lincoln's definition of democracy, government of the people, by the people, and for the people. Opinion poll is just that opportunity. It promotes democratic accountability and ensure a responsive, responsible, and representative government. But one key point that I would like to go away with, all of us to go away with, is that democratic consolidation requires the existence of robust civil society, especially in the context of Africa. We know that civil society were very instrumental in the post-Cold War democratization process, otherwise called the third wave of democratization. What happened was when the leadership was not open to political pluralism, um, in many countries, we all know that after independence, in Africa, there were one-party states bill. Even in Ghana on Nkrumah, in Kenya on the Jomo Kenyatta, and a lot of other countries created one-party states. This was a time when Gambia was having multi-party system in place. And that is why in um, 1994, when the military coup took place, um, scholars said that the Gambia's, Gambian politics are taking a U-turn. And what is that U-turn? When all other countries were moving towards democracy, instead of Gambia welcoming them, Gambia took a U-turn through a military coup. But this period, we were having multi-party system. When Cold War ended, political leaders had no choice because of the political and economic conditionalities that were put in place by the international financial donors and also Western powers. They had no choice but to open the political space by allowing multi-party systems to exist, for different political parties to exist. Now, we saw that civil society was very instrumental, including the media and even church groups were instrumental. We know the role played by Archbishop Desmond Tutu in South Africa in putting an end to apartheid, but also Archbishop James Stiona of Malawi. These were very influential religious figures that played a role in ending dictatorship and ensure there was one part, um, multi-party system. Civil society were instrumental. We know that the movement for the multi-party democracy, for multi-party democracy in Zambia, which was initially a trade union called the Zambian Congress of Trade Union, was also instrumental in bringing an end to one-party system in Zambia. And also in Mali and other places on the continent, we saw civil society be very active in the political space. The Gambia not much has been witnessed, especially after that U-turn from 1994 to 2016, because the political space was not liberalized, it was not open. A lot of these were not happening. That is why when the opinion polls were revealed ahead of the December 2021 election, a lot of people were shocked because Gambians are not used to it. It was happening or it happened for the first time. But we must note that our democracy cannot be consolidated without the robust participation of civil society. And of course, separatists and other civil society are playing just this role. One of them is to conduct opinion polls by seeking the views and opinions of people, not only to predict electoral outcomes, like any elections, but also on key issues, such as corruption, such as security, such as you know, education, amongst very other critical sectors of development. Therefore, I wish to take this opportunity to thank Cepras and all other partners who are engaged in this effort. Note that these efforts are not in waste, but they are geared towards strengthening our democracy to ensure that there is consolidation. I thank you all. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Sanjay.
It's not a surprise. Once you invite a lecturer to talk on political issues, then we expect him to be very much technical with some of the terms that uh, he was bringing up. But nonetheless, um, you spoke well, and indeed, the fact that you highlight um, it takes different stakeholders to come together to consolidate uh, our democracy is one of the reasons why we're inviting the press over as academics for also them to understand and get access to our work so that our dissemination can be done properly. Uh, before we move on to the dissemination proper, I would like to recognize the presence of our Associate Professor Momodo Pane, who is the Dean of the School of uh, Business and Public Administration. We say thank you very much and welcome. Um, then now we move to the main purpose why we are here. Yes, so um, Dr. Would you want company or? <laughs> yes, I understand. <laughs> thank you very much, MS. Uh, we really appreciate this. And Ms. Anjai also, thank you very much for honoring our invitation. So, um, are we set? So, um, we now get to the most important part of um, today's activity, engagement, which is the dissemination of our findings. And then this would be done by Dr. Mustafa Jobate, one of the senior consultants for this assignment. Um, so, the lights. So um, good morning to you all. Um, I welcome all of you to this um, very important event. As we um, wrap up this um, project of ours, um, 
Um, we are very much delighted on behalf of the team. I like to say that we are very much delighted to be part of this um, because we consider it um, a very important um, milestone in our democratization process. Um, for me, what is what is very much um, touching to me is the fact that um, we bring in data um, to to we bring in data to policy, you know, and and I think um, they will start um, a new wave of. Um, our policymakers looking at evidence, um, what we call evidence-based policy. So, so I'm really much um, touched as we wrap up this. So this particular um, edition of our opinion poll, we 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 doing we did actually um, we assessed the government, the new government. We asked people about key issues. And also, um, we did um, an OP on on the, on the on the parliamentary election. So, so that's what we're going to disseminate today. So it's in two parts. Like um, the 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 first union guy said, um, it's important that um, the media don't just do a one shot of a one shot um, uh, uh, um, uh, uh, reporting of this. But then, you know, here and there, looking at the key issues, and, you know, you can even invite people and they, they can talk about it. A lot of issues, a lot of data, a lot of important issues here, um, really. Um, so so it, 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 it's, it's, it's amazing, right? So to start with, um, we know opinion polls, actually, what they do, like our table guest speaker said, um, Sinjai, they really assess public opinion um, through um, a scientific way using a representative sample in a survey, and they've been used to predict um, uh, elections successfully around the world. And that we know that in the Gambia, um, since after 2016, um, we have a new wave of um, uh, democratization in, this, in, in, in our country. We call it um, a, a new democracy. And because of which we have a lot of candidates and a lot of political parties. So what we did was um, to, to contribute to this. Um, we did a, um, a first poll in, in August, in, in August, September of last year. Um, that was also based on assessing the government at the time and also doing a poll on the upcoming presidential election in December. But we really did not report on the assessment of the government at the time. Then shortly before the, um, the December one, we did another poll which, which went viral. So now what we're doing, what we're disseminating today, is the final version of, of, of this project, where we're assessing the new government. When we say the new government is the battle government that came into, that was voted in um, the, at the December polls. Um, so it's been like um, three months. Um, they've been in office, so we want to know what the people think about um, about the government on key issues, but also to to do um, a poll for the parliamentary, the upcoming parliamentary election. So how did we do this? The methodology um, we we have um, a frame, if you like, the, the population from which because you cannot look at everyone, you cannot call everyone. So you have a population, you have a frame where you take a sample from, a representative sample from, and the frame um, it's the latest version of the. Um, the integrated household survey um, that has telephone numbers, okay? So this is a representative sample of the Gambia and which we try to take a representative sample from, okay? So it has 14191 households across all the LDAs and um, across all 48 districts. So what we did was um, because the parliamentary election is at the level of consequences and we want to have all the consequences so what we did, this is where we differ from the, the second one, um, the second uh, methodology, the, the, the second poll, the methodology in the second poll. So here we did a proportionate um, random sampling. Uh, what we did was um, the districts were, you know, recodified into, into uh, consequences, all 53 consequences, and depending on the IEC roster of um, uh, registered voters in each consequence, we give a proportion to all the consequences. And so from that, we would 
we would know from our sample, say 10% is going to um, say Brikana or 48, uh, like 38% is going to Brikana. So this 38% of our sample, the sample that is calculated, then we did a random sampling of the households within, in our frame, households within Brikana, for example. So this is how we went about um, doing the, doing the, 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 the sample. So we, in, in total, we have a, you know, 1231 household, that is our sample size, which we increase to, to account for like um, non-responses. You know, we do an oversampling, say of 10%, so that perhaps if others do not respond, we still not below, you know, the amount that we want to hit, right? So, and all, are, like I said, they're all, you know, divided across all 53 constituencies according to the proposal of the registered voters in each constituency, right? And, and because of this, you know, we did um, a sampling also with the replacement. So we have the frame, so we pick, we did a random sampling based on ascending or descending others until we have, say, we want to do, say, we're gonna do like 300 for Brikan. So in the process, if anyone do not respond, then we do replacement because we have already sorted it out, right? Yeah, so that's what we did, and, and um, so because of that, our, our sample actually mirrors the proposal of the constituencies um, that we have. Um, but what happened is like in our second poll, you know, the country, the number of seen, because it is at household level, and most of, because there's a patriotic um, uh, um, structure here in this country, uh, most of the household heads, the telephone numbers of the household heads are given in the frame, most of the household heads are male. So that is why in the, in the sample also, we do not have, like at national level, the representation of male and female. But then, you know, like our previous one, we have a 32% of our respondents are female and 52% of our respondents are um, male. However, because it is representative at constituency level, um, this is not an issue. So on the, on the instrument that we use, the tool that we use, so we did a, um, we designed a, a questionnaire based on survey, um, the, um, the survey solution and which um, that we used, uh, it's, divided, it's divided into five um, sections. The main sections are the parliamentary and the, and, and the other section is, um, is on assessing the new government, right? Then um, we did, um, you know, we, we employed some enumerators, 12 of them, and supervisors and we trained them, you know, during a two-day um, training session to be able to do most of this. Um, the people that we employ are really expert in this because they've been doing this for a very long time. So they really know how to, how to go about. So our data, is, you know, we don't have issues with the quality of the data that is collected, right? So because the telephone interview, we gave them um, air time across all the network um, to be able to reach out, you know, to their respondents, okay? So this exercise was conducted from the 31st of March to the 2nd of April. So, so the views that you're gonna see here are just very recent. Okay, the views of the people as of this date, right? So from the 31st of March to the 2nd of April. So you kind of say, okay, I have this, you know, people, this is the view of the people from three, four months ago, right? So this is, you know, it's as recent as, you know, um, like the past, 10 to 15 days, you know, yeah. So like I said, we have interviewed um, um, 1238 respondents across all LGAs and 53 constituencies, right? So the instrument that we use, we use a copy tool, um, a computer assisted personal interviews, and the analysis of the data was done using STATA, okay, STATA 17. So the way we went about the analysis um, basically was descriptive, okay? So we generated um, some tables and um, pie charts and you know bar charts, you know, um, to to look at the key issues, right? Yeah. So for the purpose of the analysis on the assessment of the government, we looked at all those who consented to um, to taking part in the um, in the survey because their opinions are important when it comes to assessing the government. But on the OP we only looked at those that are certain that they're going to vote because this is what is important, right? Yeah, I repeat that again. 
on assessing the government, we, we analyze responses from all that consented to take, to take in part in the, in, the, in the survey. But on the OP, on the parliamentary election, we only look at those that, that are certain that they're going to vote. So whatever you're going to see, for example, on the OP, on the parliamentary election, this is the views of those that are certain that they're going to vote. So, so it's very, very close to, to, to what you're going to be seeing um, come the 9th of February, right? Yeah, so at the end of the day, we got like 75% um, of, of the respondents um, saying that they're going to vote with, with, with some certainty, right? Um, this is a little bit below um, what we got um, in, the, in the second round, um, which was like above you know, 80%, right? But it's still good, you know, 75% turnout, it's still, it's still very good. Yeah, so this is the profile of the respondent that we have. By ethnicity, as you can see, it's more or less a representative of, you know, what we know at the national <coughs> level. Okay, because we've seen that the majority are Mandinka, followed by the Fula, you know, and in that other. And by LGA also, we know Brikama is the largest. So it, it's comprising of 37%. Then you have KM you know, which is the second largest, you know, um, that is, you know, getting you somewhere around 17%, um, for example. And a very small LGA like Denjambore, you know, is just five point something percent, or Banjul is just two point, you know, about 3%, right? So it's representative of, of what we know in terms of the, the registered voters across all these LGAs. And in terms of age group, because we're looking at um, household heads, you can see the age groups, um, majority are within the 35, um, the 35, 44, you know, range, okay? Followed by those that are within the 25, 34 range at 24%, then the 45, 54 range at 22%, which is also very much representative of what we know as the age group of household heads in this country, right? Yeah, so now this section um, is the assessment of the new government on issues. So we're going to do this according to key issues, right? So as I present them, for example, I'm going to present on health, what we have found on health. So we have asked people, okay, whether this government has plans to increase access to health, healthcare in this country. And what we have found, almost an equal proposal agreed, you know, or um, either agreed or disagreed that government has plans to, to increase access to, to, to health care in this country, okay? As well as on the government plans to improve the overall health you know, um, performance in the country. So the rating of the government is like 50-50 in this, in this, um, on this. On the, on the heterogeneity in terms of the LGAs, we've seen
interested in, um, in helping the farmers, okay? And is not interested in helping the farmers, which is strongest um, in the farming communities of LRR and NDR, okay? And you know, the much talked about the ground and sales also, we have asked opinion on this, okay? Which, you know, the majority also believe that the government handling of this is really not satisfactory, okay? As you can see the, the chart, um, this is what um, they're reflecting, right? Yeah, you could see some dif you know, differences across, um, across the LGAs as well. Then we asked about um, security, another, another key topic. You know, security is an issue in this country, right? Especially around the economic forces in this country, you know, the clash, you know, with the MSDC forces somewhere in Fonia and all of this, right? So we asked two key issues or three issues here. We were interested in knowing um, whether um, people are satisfied or dissatisfied with the economic forces, okay? And we found that about 76%, um, uh, you know, 76% believe that domestic crime is increasing, okay? A greater percentage also believe that the economic forces are dissatisfied with the economic forces. And also we have, um, um, we have a good majority that think that the government is not interested in, in continuing this, um, the secrecy sector reforms, okay? Yeah, they're really not interested in, follow, um, in pursuing the secrecy sector reforms. So you could see um, the percentages here. But when it comes to the economic forces, the, dis the satisfaction with the economic forces is, 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 is greatest or is largest in West Coast region and NDR, okay? And which really everyone expects because um, they really feel in the heat, you know, of it, um, especially in phone, right? Yeah, but it's, it's really telling that people are not, uh, people don't believe that the, the government is interested in pursuing its security sector reforms and that they are not, in, they are not really, um, majority are not really satisfied with the economic forces here, though not a very large majority, as you can see the numbers, and but a large, you know, majority believe that domestic crime is on the rise, okay? Yeah, then we also looked at decentralization, whether the government is interested in, for example, subventing um, the local government, um, uh, <coughs> the local governments, or also strengthening their structures, okay? So when we looked at this, um, majority of the respondents believe that um, a government is really not interested in subventing um, um, the local governments know if government really interested in strengthening their structures. So you could see a large, um, uh, you know, above 60 percent, you know, of the respondents think, disagree or agree that government is really not interested in subventing um, um, the, the local uh, governments, as well as a large proportion, more than 70 percent, believe that they are also not interested in strengthening their structures, okay? And you could see um, this dynamics is really um, the strongest, for example, in KM, you know, and, and West Coast, you know, unlike um, Banjul, for example, in terms of strengthening their structures, you know, and in terms of government not interested in subventing LG local governments, you would see that it's also strongest in, in regions like, um, in regions like um, uh, LRR, you know, and, and, and KM, as well as um, the URR, okay? Yeah, so we're also interested in um, knowing, we, we ask people about our international relations, basically on two issues. Whether people are really satisfied with the government giving license to EU and China to fish on our waters, okay? We also ask about our relation with Senegal, whether it is exploitative of the Gambia, what people think, or whether it is a mutual um, benefit, or it is exploitative of Senegal as well. So what we have found that a very large majority, 81%, really disapprove of government granting of the fish, you know, fishing license to, to the EU and China, as well as you know, almost a half, not very large majority, think that our relation with Senegal is really exploitative of the Gambia, okay? This is not a very large majority, um, as you would see in the charts below here, okay? 
So our relationship with Gambia, being expert chiefs of the Gambia, you would see that um, this is like 50 percent, you know, and and on on those who believe that um, granting of license to EU and China is really good or excellent or it's poor or very poor, you would see this is like 54 percent. Okay, yeah, yeah. So you will be you will be. In, after the elections, so a particular party, you know, made a lot of allegations that um, um, the election was not fair, okay, which went through the, the Supreme Court, and they made a ruling, okay, and so we were interested in knowing what people think about the Supreme um, Court ruling on that particular allegations, you know, um, please on IEC and the president. So we find that um, one um, majority of the people believe that the ruling was was really um, satisfactory or very satisfactory, okay, and that a 60% rating um, for the for, for our judiciary system is really good, that people trust our judiciary system, and I think this is one of the the the, the greatest um, uh, um, uh, uh, takeaways that that the Gambia is really building when it comes to our democratization process. People can take the, the president you know, to court and, and at the end of the day come out you know, happy that they've won the case, okay? So the trust for the judicial system is still very high at 60%, you know, which is a kudos as you, could, as you can see here. Right, 60% say they can still trust and 40% say they, they really can't trust um, the, our judicial system, right? Then we also ask about um, on cross-cutting issues, we ask about government's interest in having women in leadership. We also ask about government interest in supporting youths. And then also we ask about, um, we ask um, the other cross-cutting issue was on corruption, which is a talk, we much talked about um, the issue here. So on the matter of women, having women in leadership, you know, we find that 47% hold the view that government is really not committed to having women in leadership. And I think um, this needs to be taken seriously as Barrow prepares to, um, to, to form his new cabinet, right? Yeah, that, that the only 35% hold a different view, um, that, yeah, government is interested in having women in leadership. So this should be taken into account. Then we have, on the performance of the youth, the, the majority believe that the overall performance on youth development is poor or very poor, yeah. And, and as you can see, then on corruption, um, we ask government commitment to, um, to tackling, and the government is committed to tackling corruption. So a lot of the majority either strongly um, uh, agree or agree that government is not committed to um, tackling corruption. Put together, you have, you know, you have 76% um, of those that we have asked report that they disagree or they agree, uh, disagree or strongly, um, they agree or strongly agree that government is not committed to tackling corruption. You know, I think this is reflective of, of, of what we've been seeing um, across the media in terms of a lot of corruption allegations and the responses that came from government wasn't really very satisfactory in a lot of the case. So having up to, you know, 70 something, you know, two thirds of the people believing that, thinking that, you know, government is not interested or is not committed to tackling corruption. It's a red line, I think, that, that the government needs to, um, uh, to, to, to look at for the next five years, okay? Yeah, and if you want to look at the, the differences in terms of which LGAs hold this view most, so you'll find that um, um, it's, it's across all, all the LGAs. It's across all the LGAs, but strongest, for example, no, we did this for the age groups. You find that it's across all the age groups, but strongest for those between 35 and 44. Now, for those between 35 and 44, they have the strongest view that really government is not committed to tackling corruption. Okay, compared to, for example, um, the age group um, that is say 55 and above, okay? Compared to 55 and above, they're really not um, coming forward in terms of um, uh, accounting government for corruption, right? 
then um, yeah, so, so that is it about assessing the, the new government. Then in the next part of it, um, we want to release um, uh, our, our poll results, okay? So we ask issues around, for example, um, the, the nomination process, okay? So before that, for example, we look at the vote apathy um, because um, in, our last, in our last poll, we had about 80, around 85% um, of turnout and here we're having about 75%, which is not really bad, but compared to the previous one, you've seen that people are really not showing much interest in the parliamentary election as they showed interest in the presidential election, okay? Uh, so voter apathy to some extent is likely to still remain. As we can see, only 76% um, report that they almost certain that they're going to vote, okay? compared to you know, a larger proposal in our, in our second um, poll. Then we ask about how the IEC really handled the nomination process, okay? So we ask whether people can trust the IEC, okay, to organize free and fair elections. And, and interestingly, majority still, um, despite all that has happened, you know, majority still say that they trust the IEC can organize or is going to organize a free and fair election, okay? About 63% are satisfied with IEC handling of the nomination process, despite all that happened, you know, around some of the candidates, you know, that went viral, um, about 63% um, still are satisfied um, that the, 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 the nomination process for the National Assembly um, was really, um, went well, okay? Yeah, so, and that um, a majority also think that um, they treated um, uh, the candidates you know, fairly, as you can see the statistics here, okay? Now, we ask um, about the, what the people think is the role of the National Assembly members, okay? Okay, so we collated some of the, um, from the Constitution, you know, what they are mandated to do then we add, you know, the, the norm that a NAM is supposed to bring some developmental projects. We add that to it, okay? So what we found that, you know, um, the majority of the people, the issues that came on top are one, even though it's not a constitutional mandate, are one that a NAM is supposed to bring some developmental projects, okay? Two, a NAM, the role of a NAM is to pass bills, okay? As you can see, um, uh, as you can see that, um, in the first um, one here. So about 68% of the respondents um, uh, um, hold the view that NAM is supposed to bring some developmental projects, and 60% hold the view that they're supposed to be passing bills. A very small percentage, 17%, you know, um, um, hold the view that um, NAM is supposed to advise the president, um, despite these being a constitutional mandate, okay? Then we also ask about, you know, why we've seen a proliferation of, um, you know, uh, of, 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 of candidates for this National Assembly election. A large number of people are vying for it, right? So we ask um, uh, why people think um, this is happening, okay? And the responses that came on top of it is because we have, you know, a widening democracy, you know, because of our democratization process, you know, people are coming forward to, um, to, to really um, uh, vie for some of these political positions, right? Then apart from that also, um, people believe that, you know, and I think that's a kudos to the media um, and, and the CSO um, the community, that people are being increasingly aware of what is happening, right? Uh, becoming more and more interested, they becoming, you know, they, they knowing that it is their, if, if they are right um, to contest. And as a result of that increased awareness, we've seen large number of um, candidates, okay? Yeah. Then on why do we have a lot of independent candidates? We ask, what do you think is the reason for, for having, you know, a lot of independent candidates? A lot of, on, on the top of the list, you know, as you can see here, you know, about 53% of the respondents believe that the independent candidates, you know, they, they have a, a different agenda, 
That is why they come in four, right? But then we have about 46% who think they've been, you know, ecocentric, if you like. They've been opportunist, you know. Yeah, so, so this is the view of the people as we have it, right? Yeah, some, some really don't have any idea about this, you know. Um, others say it is because they don't have a party that they belong to, you know. Yeah, but, but interesting to know that majority think that they have a different agenda, um, which is also good um, for, for our democratization um, process. Now, a very important issue here is what should a NAM, uh, what the next, the, the sixth um, uh, National Assembly legislature, the, the, the incoming one, what are the most pressing issues that they should tackle once they come into office? When we ask majority, the, the one that comes on top is the anti-corruption legislature. And I think this is really, really important, you know, uh, because, you, you know, we've seen that about 70-something percent or 67 percent of the respondents believe that the government is not interested in tackling corruption. Now people are saying on top of our agenda for the sixth legislature, we want them to talk about corruption. We want them to pass the bill. So whoever is going to be, you know, the chairman, um, you know, out there should really take this thing seriously. This is what the people want. They want you to pass a bill on anti-corruption. They also want you to amend the constitution. The constitutional amendment came for 64% of the respondents, which is a large majority, right? They want the constitution to be amended, you know, and these are the, these are the most critical issues um, uh, that they want um, the the sixth legislature to, to, uh, to, to look at, okay? Yeah, so on their satisfaction with the past um, uh, National Assembly, uh, majority of the respondents um, rated them as good, okay? But also a substantial proposal, about 37% um, uh, think that, you know, really the performance was really poor or very poor, okay? So the rating is not that very good, right? Yeah. So this is what they say, you know, 45% said their performance was good, 28% said it was poor, and 9% said it was very, very poor, okay? Yeah, so there about, right? Now on the other most um, uh, important, I would say, or the much awaited one on what we have in terms of our predictions for the for the upcoming um, uh, parliamentary election. And this, I think this is what the media is most interested in, right? <laughs> yeah. So this time around, um, if you remember, when we did the first poll, we this, the, the percentage of the secret votes were like um, around 44%, right? In our first poll. Then in our second poll, we had 22%, right? Yeah, if, I'm, if I remember well, we had 22%. And because 22% was, was not very significant, we could make just a one set prediction. Okay, however, in this particular one, because this is at the level of consequences, okay, what we have realized is in some consequences, the proposal of those, of, of secret votes, is very high. It's really very high. Okay, in a particular constituency in Janjam, I think we had 100%, right? In Janjam, right? So, I mean, in the midst of that, you really cannot make an accurate um, prediction. Um, it's like noisy. So what we did is we looked at it in scenarios form. We looked at a case where we really not put in any restriction on, on what is allowable in terms of um, secret votes, the percentage of what is allowable, all right? Then we call that um, uh, scenario one. So we report, okay, as if um, those that said that their vote is secret is not important. So we report, and for this we have all 53, um, we have all 53, um, uh, all 53 consequences, okay? So here, where in you have all, everyone saying that my vote is secret, or where you have everyone saying, you know, so and so I'm going to vote for, 
we, we reported on all of this. And this, is in a, and this is important for the media to understand. Okay, but this is very noisy because, you know, in a situ situation you have like 75% saying, I'm not telling you who I'm going to vote for. And you have only 25% telling you who they're going to vote for. So you're coming out and saying that so-and-so is going to win. Um, this is really very noisy. As you where we have less than 50 percent, we just allowing less than 50 percent of the respondents saying that their votes are secret. So when we do that, we are only able to predict for 36 consequences. And within that prediction, this is what happens, okay? 
So this is what happened. Of the 36 um, uh, consequences that we are predicting, 50% goes to NPP. Of the 36 consequences, right? 50% goes to NPP, 28, about 29% goes to UDP, and NRP you know, gets about 14%, then 7% becomes inconclusive. So this is more robust. This is a more robust forecast, okay? Because we're just allowing for less than 50% of SIGDIV you know, votes, okay? Yeah, which is really also higher than, than what we had seen in our, in our last poll. Because in our last poll, the, the, the average was like 22%. So because of that, to mirror what we, we saw in our last polls, we did a scenario three. And what is scenario three? We're just allowing less than 30% of signed votes, like one third. It, it can be more than one third of the voters saying that my vote is signed. So once we allow for that, we are only able to predict for 14 consequences. Okay? We are only able to predict for 14 consequences. Okay? Which is, you know, this is the scenario that has less noise. And um, yeah, so what, what is the outcome of that? Okay, so when we did that, um, we got, um, sorry, yeah, so when we did that, so we got 50%, um, sorry, we got 30% going to um, NPP, okay, and we got, huh? No. No, it's not, this, yeah, it, it's a mistake. We didn't put scenario one there. It's scenario three. Yeah, that's where we have, uh, um, okay, just, just a moment. I, I'll just give you that from here, okay? Yeah. So we're only able to predict 14 consequences, and of these, NPP is getting 50%, okay? That is seven consequences are going to NPP. Then we have UDP getting um, 28%, okay? Yeah, NPP getting 28%, um, which is about four consequences. And we have NRP getting 14%, which is about um, two consequences and one is inconclusive, um, which is 7%, right? So a total of 14 we are able to predict, okay? Yeah, so I repeat that again. So when we allow, which is the strongest prediction we are making, when we allow for less than 30% of secret votes, we are only able to predict 14 um, consequences of which seven goes to an, uh, uh, NPP, Four goes to UDP, two goes to NRP, and one is inconclusive, okay? Now, when we increase um, uh, our noise um, to, f to less than 50%, you know, we have 36 consequences which we can predict, and among the 36 consequences, 12 goes to N uh, NPP, four goes to NRP, PDOIS, you know, PPP all get one, UDP gets 12, independent get two, and four is inconclusive, okay? When we allow for the greatest you know, possible noise we can have um, in our data, where we are now you know, predicting for all the 53 consequences, okay, we're getting um, a PPP, sorry, NPP at 30%, you know, which is 16 consequences. We're getting NRP, you know, five consequences. PDOI is two consequences, PPP, at one, UDP at 14, APRC at one, and we have independence four. So in all these scenarios, it is interesting that we really don't see, for example, GDC doesn't show. There's not a particular, um, those that are conclusive. For, do, for those that are conclusive, it's important that we put it this way, right? Because there are those that are inconclusive, right? They might come up you know, as, as winners, okay? So we, we haven't seen, for example, DDC, we haven't seen other, other parties, okay? Yeah, so, so this is what we have um, for our 
the predictions for the parliamentary elections. And I, we really want the media to really understand what the different scenarios are, why it's important that we report in the terms of scenarios, so that at the end of the, um, the parliamentary election, you know, you, they didn't say like suppress, but that's that, you know, this is going to happen, then it happens this way, right? So, so for us, uh, the, the most robust one that we have is scenario three with less than 30% of you know, allowable um, the secret voters. In that, we only predicting for 14 consequences. Okay, for 14 consequences, okay? And, and if you have the report, um, uh, you would know which candidates, which consequences NPP is winning, and which consequences UDP and other parties are winning, or which, which particular um, uh, um, uh, candidates are winning, for example, and as you increase it to scenario two, scenario three, you would see the winners also. So if I am a candidate, for example, if I'm a candidate, you know, and I am winning in scenario three, then I am very much confident, okay? I'm very much confident that I'll make it to the, to the sixth, you know, legislature, right? But if I'm a, if I'm a candidate, and I am only winning in the, in the first scenario, you know, without any restriction on the noise, right? That's where I'm only showing up, you know, I'm not very much sure, okay? The one who is only sh just showing up in, the, um, in scenario two is, is, is better than, you know, the one that's showing up in scenario three, okay? Yeah, so uh, that, that being said, um, we have the report um, that has the names of the candidates in each scenario, those that are winning, and which consequences are inconclusive, um, so that for those that want um, a more, uh, more detail, um, especially the media, for example, if you want to report on that, I think it's important that you get the report, okay, which we're going to share, okay? But, but I think um, at this level, it is clear that in all the scenarios, NPP and the NPP, you know, the broader NPP coalition is really going to control um, the, the sixth uh, National Assembly legislature. Okay? So, um, with that note, I say thank you all for, for your time and um, for, for coming here. Thank you.
But uh, I think yeah, you supply them with those extra, yes. extra material. There are, there are other information who are not appearing in the in the report. One after the other. Hmm? One after the other. Oh, the chairman. <laughs> One after the other. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, so we will not be asking that. Oh, okay. Uh, you want to go? You want to go? Can go? Yeah, so, um, yeah, um, thanks for that. Uh, I think that's a valid, uh, very important uh, observation uh, that, that you have made. Uh, you know, uh, and actually, we have. Person are literate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we have that about, um, as you were saying, 46% of the respondents are actually illiterate. Uh, and, you know, to some extent, right, this might affect uh, uh, the validness of some of their responses. Okay, uh, but what we do is always, you know, uh, draw them down to something. Okay, uh, uh, regarding Regarding the foreign situation uh, or foreign security situation of the country, right? Looking at the crimes, you know, uh, and, 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 and other issues, right? Uh, what is your perception on how government is handling this thing? Okay? Uh, and then the respondent will tell you that I don't think government is doing well, okay, uh, on, on those issues, right? Uh, and, and to us, that would mean, you know, uh, you disagree with the statement that government needs. 
Can I say something to Lev? Go ahead. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Jawara. Like you said, um, it's important that we, we discern between what we call key informant interviews, which usually seek the opinion of experts on a particular topic as a research methodology from opinion polls. Opinion polls are the, the views of the general people who might not be experts on a particular issue. So they're really not giving you an expert opinion, but they're really giving you the opinion of a general person. And that's what OPs do, you know, uh, do right? And in our, in our poll, you can see that all the respondents are above 18. As we show the age group, the categorization, all the respondents are above 18. And the way the interviews were conducted, they spoke to them in the, in the local languages. Okay, so someone who household head, who is mature, you're speaking to him in his local language, really you would understand um, um, the issues you're talking about. You know, if we live in this country, um, uh, all the things we talked about are, are common issues that you would one way or the other form a view of, form an opinion of. So uh, that being said, I don't think um, um, that's, that's an issue that, that you really need to worry about because it's not a key informant interview. If you're going to do a key informant interview, we're really just going to go to experts on education only. Then we ask them about the issues around education, experts on health, we ask them on health issues, experts on, for example, on, on, on the economy, we ask them about the economy. Then that, but this is a general OP, and this is what, how it is done everywhere. Yeah, uh, again, to, to add up, like, <clears throat> if you look at the, the mode of our questions, these questions are framed in a way that it is not technical. We ensure that uh, we ask them questions that they can easily comprehend. You know, mind you, uh, there are people who might not necessarily be literate, but they are well informed about situations around them. So the questions are like, for example, you know, security, we're looking at general, you know, crime rate in the country, for example. You don't need to go to a high school to know that. You understand? You know, is your environment, the issue of ECOMI. All, of, all governments are aware of ECOMI present in this country. You know, you don't need to be a university graduate to understand question around that. So the questions are typically, you know, questions that around your, you know, around your you know, environment that you understand as a citizen, and, and, and based on that, uh, questions were framed. So just like Dr. said, you know, there are different methodologies that you use in a research work. So this is a survey, and we do not necessarily discriminate as such, and we are not looking for an expert opinion on this. So it is a public perception, and it's to be understood in that way. Not an expert view, but perception of people, how they feel as citizens of the country. Thank you. On what? On and women? No, I think it is on the... Yeah. Sorry, no, sorry. Yeah. Okay, I mean, uh, uh, we, we have actually uh, on the first question, yes, we have um, some key question on women, uh, but you know, particularly looking at women in decision-making rooms in general, right? Uh, and those are, if you go to the first question,
I, I think uh, maybe he doesn't have a, maybe it's our understanding of how we do the polls. When we analyze, you know, it in two, in two parts. When we analyze key issues, we looked at, for example, what you're saying, we can look at that on the key issues, generally, uh, which we did under the cross-cutting and, uh, and the issues. What people think generally about, say, women in leadership, okay? Um, but when it comes to the poll, um, we ask about, Maybe what you mean is the responses, dividing the responses in terms of what women think and what men think. Maybe that's what you're referring to. Yeah, I think more, I think more, to what extent uh, more generally related to men, what, what people yeah. think about what women think about what women think about in another assembly. Uh, okay. okay, maybe that's an issue we have not picked up. Yeah, 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 yeah maybe that's, that's an issue right. we have not picked up, How right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, maybe that's an issue we have we have not picked up. Maybe we could have included, for example, um, what people think about having um, uh, um, yeah, women, yeah. you know, national assembly members. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think I think uh, research in generally, you know, which will have its own, yeah. you know, flaws here and there. You know, actually, that was not an intention. Even you look at uh, our, you know, question, you can cross tablate based on, you know, gender to see, you know, what women's responses are. Even though uh, Dr. Jobad alluded to earlier, that even you look at the, the percentage of women that we interviewed, you know, is, is, is a little bit below, you know, the nationally registered um, women in the, in, the, in the election. We only got about 33%. Mm. I mean, that is not our making. It's as a result of, you know, not having the required. These are all factored in the, you know, in the methodology. You know that we ensure that um, you know we have uh, you know accessible just like a percentage like 52.5 percent of eligible voters as women in the country, but we are unable to get that because the frame we are using, you know, is integrated household survey, which is you know mainly um, 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 head of family households, for example, which are predominantly men. You know, sometimes it's difficult to get some women. You know responses. I think specifically in this survey, you know, we only ask specific question on women. It's about it's about two mm -hmm. on the cross cutting. We only analyze one, I think. Mm -hmm. And then if you look at our questions, we have over almost hundred questions. Mm -hmm. And if we want to analyze all those questions, I mean, we will have something, you know, uh, 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 you know, of maybe close to a thousand pages of report. But one thing we also think about as a center is maybe to make some kind of, you know, bulletin monthly to see, looking at our data set, some of those, you know, interesting issues that we might, you know, report on periodically in order to inform the population about some of the findings. You know, the data is very huge, you know, and then we welcome the media, if you like, you know, to engage out in some of those, you know, um, um, data that the data set we have help you and then try to write on, on them as well. So uh, that is a tension. Thank you for that. Any other? I'll just one comment on that. Um, so probably not necessarily to debate the understanding that because that can come under the cross-cutting issues. Debate people's understanding of women in leadership, for instance. But in relation to the national center election, uh, I don't know which of you two options would make sense more. Either more 
Good controversy. Right? Yeah, about the paid paid. Um, uh, anyway, let me just say government commitment to addressing problems. I didn't say the paid number. The paid number should be down. It's blocking. Okay, 15. Uh, 15. Hmm. Okay, so it's 15. Government not committed. Just let me get the to this one. Look at so this is the yeah. question. Yeah. I mean, it depends on how the question was framed. So this yeah. is the question. As you can see, uh, the current government is not doing enough yeah. to tackle corruption in the country. This is the question, right? Yeah. So putting agree and strongly agree. That the question is: current government is not doing um, enough to tackle corruption. Okay. So it's not good. Yeah. 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 The the third the title. Agree that government is committed to addressing corruption. No, government uh, is not committed. No, the title is the title. They agree to this question. Yeah. Meaning they say they agree the government is not doing enough. Thank you. Yeah. So I think the issue is the title. The title. I think, I think that's, that's a good one. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I do not say this is where I said it. In what page you choose? Any other issue on the ground? Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah.
corruption. Yeah. But it's only for the corruption.